How many of you grew up with a library in your classroom or, your, or re readily accessible in your school? Some of you were homeschooled, right? So if you were homeschooled, how many of your parents, you can raise your hand if your parents took you to a library weekly? Okay. So let's ask that again. All those qualifications, how many of you had a school, in, had a library in your school or your classroom or you went to a, a library weekly, regularly? Okay, if I get down here, I might be able to see the hands that are raised. Okay, all right, okay. Um, culturally, most cultures, once they get to be, I don't mean this in a snobby way, but once they get to a certain level of civilization, they, they want libraries, a culture does. So would you, could you agree with that statement? Okay. Almost every town in America has a library and it's supported mostly by public funds, right? Um, why do you think that is? Not why is it supported by public funds, but why do, why do people think libraries are important? Or do you think libraries are important? Joy? They, pre they can preserve the culture. Sure. How would they do that? All right. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, Sarah. Um, depending on the area, um, some libraries I know have outreach programs, and so if they think the kids are better educated, they have them come in and read books, and they're, um, they know more, maybe they don't stay out of trouble. Because I know that's something in our area that they do outreach. So, okay, they have trying to get the kids. Just have them more knowledgeable and have them I guess, better educated so they make better choices. Okay, so, but. They think that. Do you think that? Do you think that a library helps a community be more educated? If they actually take advantage of the library, sure. But if they don't okay, and when I say community, let's take it to whatever community the library serves. Does our library here help this community be more educated? It depends if they go to the bookstore. Okay. Sure, I mean, I guess somebody has to walk in there. But um, in this community, we can kind of encourage use of the library, right? This question is dated, isn't it? Because everything that's in the library is sitting there on your desk, is that correct? Everything in the library there is on your desk? Is accessible on your desk? Not really. Okay. Rick? Um, I guess in kind of a political sense, libraries are a way of preserving freedom because uh, if you look at totalitarian countries, they restrict access to books and, and knowledge because they want to indoctrinate the people. So sure. If people have libraries, they have a way of creating their own ideas, then, then uh, that's a way of preserving freedom because Want to do that. What assumption are you making there about the library, though? <laughs> what assumption is he making? That the material is not like central to what the government does. Yeah, that that the government is not in control of the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I mean, but libraries are under somebody's control, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Everything that goes in a library is curated or censored. Remember we talked about censorship at the end of last semester? Okay. Our library is under censorship. Certain things go in, certain things don't go in. <coughs> Every library is. 
for that matter, right? And so, now some people are kind of oblivious to it, um, but just, I mean, just on the, on the sense, in, in the sense of space, you know, once, once shelf space disappears, you can't buy new books unless you get rid of old books. Okay. So, but you're right, in a very powerful sense, um, libraries promote freedom or liberty, or they can, provided they're open, they have, they have, they're open to pretty much any ideas. And that's, I hesitate to say that. We don't promote freedom in our library. We promote, we don't. We, we promote the truth, which is actually free freedom. <laughs> okay. But we, there's some things we don't put in there. We don't want the, young, the mostly younger minds that are in there to, be, um, to face certain issues just yet. Um, but we say, so we say freedom, what is, if educationally or philosophically, why does a library promote freedom? There's a phrase, there's a, there's a little phrase that supposedly educators believe in. You mean readers are readers? That no. <laughs> no. She's, all, she's on, the, yeah, on the, the most recent um, slogans. The, the, um, well, let's just say most leaders are readers, but I don't know if all readers are leaders. So, but anyway, I haven't thought about that. Okay, the, f the second word is freedom. The first word is academic. Remember academic freedom? Academic freedom, in its classic sense, is the freedom to pursue truth. Okay? And somebody that honestly believes in academic freedom, believes in the power of the truth, and they're not worried about somebody reading something that's not completely true. Once they get, once their minds are, as long as the truth is available to them. Okay. There are, for that matter, a lot of competing theological views in our library. There's a tongue. Every different author has different views. There's no two authors alike. And you can read, you're allowed to read all of them. We hope you discern what fits with what you believe and what doesn't fit with what you believe. We do put stronger warnings on certain things that are violently opposed to what we believe. Right? Um, but, so a library is important for freedom. Um, What did, you, what did you say when I, when I asked this question? I can't remember, um, but I want to... Like an outreach. What's that? Like an outreach. Outreach. Um, to help them form their own opinions and have higher education so that they can make better choices. Okay. Did you say something about um, that if people are educated, they... Well, you, okay. If they're educated, they will make better choices. Okay. Then Right, that's true. But as a culture, as, we, as a culture advances, and I would say it is an advancement, I would rather read books and teach lectures than hoe potatoes. Okay. I'm, I'm not against hoeing potatoes. Somebody has to hoe the potatoes. But if everybody in the, in the civilization was still hoeing potatoes, we would consider ourselves, you know, in cavemen. <laughs> subsistence farm, farmers. Anyway, um, in America especially, we believed in an educated citizenry. Remember, our founding fathers all wanted everyone to be educated. They believed in public education. Uh, contrasted with government education, but they believed in public education. Um, and so that, I, the, the knowledge, the proliferation of knowledge and all that 
fits in perfectly with the idea, or a library fits in perfectly with the pro proliferation of knowledge and having information and knowledge accessible to the public as a whole. Um, so it is important. Um, to a school, do you think it's important that a school has a library? Mary and Sarah think it's important. They, they get paid because we have a library. They get their, some of their education paid for because we have a library. Okay? I, we all seem a little sleepy, and that's fine. I'm sleepy too. But let's try to work our way through this, this, the, these questions, okay? Um, I, I mean, it's a serious question because I want all of you, in one sense or another, will use this information, and whether it's subliminally or purposefully, okay? Um, is it important that Fairhaven Baptist College has a library? Yes. Why? Okay, so yes. Well, it must be, it must be because they have one and they do no evil. You know, <laughs> they, everything they do is right and perfect. Not necessarily, right? Okay. So why, why is it important that we have a, a, a library? If it's important that we, Fairhaven Baptist College, has a library, is it important that you, your family, has a library? Um, is it important that you, your first and second grade classroom, or your seventh and eighth grade classroom has a library, or has access to a library, and utilizes the access to the library. I know we have computers, we all have computers, and I know Google answers everything, okay? But does Google answer everything? Does Wikipedia have the answers to everything? No, they don't, and that's not necessarily why we need a library, but it's part of why we, why you, we should have a library. Why, why is it important for Fairhaven Baptist College to have a library? Maybe I, we should um, ban computers from all freshmen, force them to use the library so they understand the importance. You are all saying, sure, I'm a sophomore. <laughs> um, what, so wh why, why is it important for us to have a library? Should we just let it shrink because more and more stuff can be found on the internet? Mary, what do you think? Mm-hmm. So we wouldn't be able to find those in the public library or maybe even not on the computer. Some are out of print too. Okay. Let's so and that's that's a valid point. Could we translate that to uh, being a eighth and ninth grade science teacher? Someone beside our librarians? <laughs> Jacob? There may be texts and articles and things in there that you can use that represent you know, the Christian worldview that if you went to the library with these questions and tried to research it yourself, you'd find completely different answers than if you went online and did a couple of Google searches. Okay. So it, it's a different wealth of information for any topic. Um, so okay. If, if, how many of you had science in 7th through 10th grade sometime then? All right. How many of you did a science project or a science fair or a science something that wasn't directly related to your textbook in high school at some time? You did a bug collection or a leaf collection or a rock collection or an experiment of some sort? Okay, all of those types of things, that was the most fun part of science class, wasn't it? Because it, it, you got to do it. <laughs> it was better than sitting there listening to the teacher talk. You got to do it. And maybe you're the per type of person like me that just likes to read and learn that way. But, and, and it's like, those bugs stunk too bad. I, <laughs> it was not fun. But, okay, so we're, we're just using science as an illustration. Some of you, you may have had to go to a public library to get information for that project. Okay? It probably wasn't right in your classroom. I wouldn't expect all the information you needed to do a, a, a science experiment or, or display or whatever right in the classroom. Hopefully, you would have gone to a library. Um, because a library serves more than just your classroom or your, I mean, maybe, I mean, if it was about snakes, you could go talk to 
uh, Andrew Edwards, you know, he knows everything about snakes. He's got the snake library, okay? So some families have, you know, and, you know, Barrick, he has the, uh, he has the, uh, what, what is it where you, you know, all the heads on the wall, the, the taxidermy uh, shop, okay? But um, certain, you, certain families will have more books about certain topics, and if, if you, uh, if your assignment is related to something that your family, your parents, have instilled a love for in your life and in your home, then you can just go home and, and look at all that. But school isn't that way. Not everything in school is your family's favorite topic. I don't think. If so, you got a weird family. <laughs> so, library has the resources there. And something that we've all kind of assumed along the way, and I don't want to fight my way through asking, I'm going to go the easy route and just tell you. Um, the, 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 the thing that is important, one of the things that's important about a library philosophically and having one for your Christian school or your family is that you control what's in the library. Control. Okay? Now we've said that. Okay? Jacob said, yeah, if they go to the public library, they're going to find things that you might not want them to see, especially a 7th or 8th grader or younger, okay? Um, sometimes you have to go to the public library because there's not any other place, but there are dangers in a public library, definitely. You know, just, I mean, stay out of the romance section, right? Just to be blatant. Shelves and shelves and shelves of, of, uh, Literary pornography, um, right there, available to anybody in the library, in the public library, and you might need to, your kids might need to go to the public library. So, but, but you can easily send them to the school library if you trust the people that have control of the school library. Right? So, um, what about if I have, I'm a history teacher, or I'm, a, I'm the government teacher, and I want my kids to learn about how the founders, what they did when they were constructing the Constitution. How much of that type of material would you expect to be at a public library? Very little, okay? So, and it relates to control, but one part of control is making sure is a protection. Another part of control is making sure the resources are there that your teachers will need. Now I'm shifting to school, to school administration mode, but you're a teacher and you're thinking, it would be really good if we had our students learn about the history of Grenada he didn't, he didn't even, he just barely even moved his head. <laughs> even Shem is tired today. But whatever it is, I want him to do, I want him to study the different types of rocks. Well, who knows? I mean, you are going to need things for them to study. You go to the principal and say, I'd like to do this project. And he says, well, not, next, not this year, but maybe next year. And what are, what are some books that would be good for the kids to have? You've studied it. You think it's great. We need to get those books so that the kids can find them. Whether you would get them from your collection or we buy some for the library, or we ask for donations or whatever. Okay? So c control is at least two sides. One is protection, keeping bad stuff out of the library. And the other is supplying materials that you know your teachers will need. Okay? Our library, we buy stuff about different countries. Why do you think we do that? Because the fifth and sixth graders are going to do a geography project on the different countries. And we would much rather they find the information about the different countries here for two reasons, for several reasons. One, it's very easy to take them to the library in school. It's just a three minute walk. Rather than throwing them on a bus and driving into town. Our library is pretty close, but how much time out of the day would it take if we took them a field trip to the library? If we do that once a week, you know? 
So having it, clo having it here means it's close, it saves time, and um, you know, they can't get distracted by something and run into something that we would rather them not see or read at this point in their lives. So they are important. What, um, what do you think is, a, is one of a very strong um, obstacle to having a library? What are some obstacles to having a library? Let's say that uh, you are, okay, ladies, this probably wouldn't happen in our circles, but just stretch your imagination a little bit. Let's say you're the principal of a school and you want to have a library or you have a little library, uh, you have some books and stuff. What are obstacles to having a good library? Not enough money. That's one of the first. Why are libraries expensive? Why? What, what are the costs involved? Joy. You need a place. You need a space. That takes money. I mean, maybe you have an extra room somewhere, but even if you have an extra room, what are you going to do? Set some tables up and just stack them in there and say, go for it? You're not going to do that, right? So it takes dedicated space. It's hard to have a classroom in your library. There's, there, I've been in places where the library was a classroom, but it was only a classroom for one or two hours out of the week. Why? Because you want the library to be accessible. Okay, if, it's a, if it's an elementary type school where you know that nobody's going to be free at this hour, then you could schedule a class in the library. But um, if you have a class in the library, the librarian is probably not going to be able to do much of their work while a class is taking place. What would be other expenses? Davey? Have to have somebody to run it. To keep it clean. Somebody to run it. One, just somebody to keep it clean. People are going to go in there, and it needs to be kept clean. That's janitorial. That's, not, that's low expense. But somebody to run it, that's high expense. These masters of science and master of education education and library science, they, they demand high wages. <laughs> but it does take somebody to run it. You can't just say, well, we got these books and we're going to, let's just all 10 of us get together and throw the books on the shelves, put them in order. How's that going to work for you? Okay. All right. What, uh, what else? Shelving. Shelving. We kind of inferred that because we said tables wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Shelving. Anybody think of other things? You can't just put a whole bunch of books on the shelves. You have to have, put them in a system so you can find them. Some type of a system. And a system. So, and, and, and there's two parts to a system, at least. There's what people look at to find where the book is, and then there's what's on the book to identify that it's the book that you were looking for. Is that right? It used to be called a card catalog. Anybody ever been in an antique shop and seen these mm -hmm. the things with the big drawers that only a 3 by 5 card can fit in? Tons of them? That's a card catalog. We still, use, we still use that term, I believe, but most card catalogs are in a computer. It's a catalog system in a computer. But So you've got to have Either the cabinet with the drawers and all the cards and all of that, and the time to put that all together so people can find your books that you have on your shelves. Once you get past a, a, maybe a, th a thousand books, you better have a system. Even 500 books. You could scan 500 books and find your, I mean, if you just said, oh, all the biographies there and all the, that's there. You could find what you wanted pretty easily, but you get larger and larger and larger. You're going to be able to need to be able to find it. Um, so then that costs money. Um, a library software system can cost anywhere from six or seven hundred dollars to uh, twenty to fifty thousand dollars. We don't have the twenty to fifty thousand dollar one here. <laughs> But, and we, we try to, there's certain things, and we'll talk about them, I have time still, we'll talk about certain things that you want to have in your computer program 
that are not in all library computer programs. Um, and so you, have, you want to get a certain level of it. We try to get the most reasonable, be the most responsible with our money, but even now, there's a feature that, um, there, that we used to have. We used to be able to put our catalog online. Well, that died, so they revamped it, and now they're offering it to us as a subscription. What does that mean? You're always paying. Always paying, whether it's yearly or monthly or whatever, it's normally cheaper yearly, but still you're going to pay. You're going to pay this year and then you're going to pay next year and where does the money come from? Okay. That's what we're talking about, it's, it's expensive. An obstacle is expense. And then of course the books cost money. You can gather quite a collection of books for very cheap. But I don't know how many people will read them, right? Okay. Now, some of them will be read. Some people are, like to read, but don't like to collect books. So they buy books, and then they, you, you get a few people like that, and they are willing to donate to your library. They've read it. They've got their enjoyment out of it. They give it to you. Great. As long as what they like to read is stuff that your students need to see. <laughs> okay? If they just like romance novels, <laughs> um, or even if they just like... If they only like um, theology books, okay, that would be great for our library. But for your first through twelfth graders library, it's not going to be used that much. Your tenth and eleventh graders might use that kind of stuff, but there's not very many high school Bible classes that have research papers. You get the Bible type research papers once you get into college, right? So, but you can get it. You can get a horde of books for free. Go to all the free places, you know. But and so you can fill your shelves easily. But will those books be used is another thing. Okay. Then if you buy a book, you can get books for fairly reasonable for a quarter of the price of some other books, same title, but it only lasts a tenth as long. And in a library, you want people to use your books. So you want to buy maybe not the, the most fanciest, um, how else can I improperly say, expensive, leather-bound, gold-embossed book. But you do want to, as much as possible, have hardback books, right? And doesn't that make sense? We would want hardback books in a library. You, as a student, you want the paperback. You want the paperback that's already been bought by someone else, you know, used and new on Amazon. That's how I like to buy everything for me, for me. But for the library, now I, want, I don't necessarily have to buy new from Amazon, but I want to buy hardback in, in very good condition because I want it to be used over and over again and not fall apart. And hardbacks cost more than softbacks, don't they? So it's expensive. All right. So we've talked about any other obstacles to having a library? I just thought of this. We, we talked about, uh, Davey said, Dave said, uh, you need somebody, right? People to clean. But you really need somebody to keep it organized, to organize it and keep it organized. To, you need somebody in charge of the library and it can't be just anyone. It takes a certain type of person to be a librarian. We'll actually talk about that type of person if we have time. <laughs>